Hey you guys, Charlie here. Welcome back to Conquering Kerbal Space Program, where we are, uh, we have a satellite network up now. Isn't that nice? It will help us a lot uh, to our overall goal of getting a self-sufficient base on every single planet. Uh, take a look at the solar system really quick. You can see that we are definitely using the Outer Planets mod, and I, I've, I'm committed to it, so we are going to have the Outer Planets in the playthrough now. That's cool. Uh, that being said, though, putting a base on the outer planets or around the outer planets, very, very difficult. So if I do even do one of them, um, that's a huge bonus. I'm also going to have to look at, I don't know, amending our little goal here because Elu, right? Elu is normally a planet, right? Elu is normally a, um, it used to be a planet that I'd have to land on and, and set up a base on. Which is cool, except now it's a moon of Sarnus. Um, so not only will I have, the, like, say, for instance, I will have dark time on this side of the planet, right? So the solar panels that we have to have for uh, mining purposes and things like that, um, just keeping the general electricity on the base on. Um, not only do I have to compete with a fairly extended dark time on Elu, but I'm also going to have to deal with Sarnus's dark time as well, which is enormous. Uh, so I'm not sure what it's going to take to keep the lights on on Elu. We're going to have to look at that. Um, I still want to do it. Perhaps I'll do an orbital station around Sarnus instead. Maybe we'll put one like inside the inner ring or something. Maybe that will be what the challenge is. I don't know. But... Elu is going to be very difficult to put a self-sustaining base on just because it's got its own dark time, which is already extensive because of its proximity to the sun. And also keep in mind, solar panels are way less effective out here. There, there is a huge uh, sort of degradation, if you will, in the amount of solar energy that you can grab from the sun uh, using solar panels. And as you get out here near Sarnus, they're pretty much like there's it's very very weak Espec like even if we get out way out here like if i get when we get way out here with pluck way over here um kiss your solar energy goodbye pretty much so that's going to be difficult so we'll, we'll have to look at that at another time but right now we are looking at Kerbin. Obviously, that's where we live, and we are looking at sol satellites and all that stuff, and it's really great. We have a scan, this satellite here, we just put up the scanner last episode. Uh, the scanner has been at work, it is almost done. You can see it's making a map of Kerbin, we'll do a slope, a little easier to understand, a little easier to see. You can see that it's making a map of Kerbin as it, as it rotates underneath it. Um, these are obviously the patches that it hasn't covered yet, so yeah, it's working on it. It's gonna be great. Once it's done, we'll have this. We'll have this all done. We'll have the contract complete, and then we can take this little guy and send it over to Moon. Speaking of the Moon, here's the contract for the Moon, and you can see that we have launch a satellite, uh, launch a satellite that can reach the inner planets. That's one that we've already done, but I just didn't use a new satellite for some reason. Um, this one says create create a network for the moon so that's what we're going to do uh we're going to start that today but here's what i want to do though all right so this is the, this is the mission with regards to the moon okay we're going to do a low resolution scan of the moon that's the satellite that's currently doing it for kerbin we're going to take the one that's on kerbin and we're going to transfer it to the moon when it's done so that's going to take care of that then i'm going to have a probe go out to midness it's going to be an equipped probe. Um, I'm going to probably do the same, um, the same sort of little probe as I did last time. A really simple thing, but I want one that's going to orbit and maybe relay some communications, so that when we go and try to set up our satellite network for the moon, uh, for Minmus. Sorry, I'm talking about Minmus now. Uh, when we try to do our satellite network for Minmus, I'll already have one orbiting that can kind of help me with connecting to the KSC. That's the hope, anyway. Um, then we're going to create a network for the moon. So that's sending three more satellites out here. And we have to adjust the design a little bit for that satellite because even though the diameter of the moon is much smaller than Kerbin, um, we are also going to be orbiting at a slower speed. So I'm, I'm not sure about the dark time 
as it like relative to Kerbinen. I'm not sure whether it's going to be more dark time or less. I'm thinking it's going to be more. So we'll probably have to put an, an extra battery. But that's it though. Like our, our design for our launching of satellites is solid. So let's go do some of those things. Okay, so back at Mission Control. Um, no, not well. This is Mission Control. Back at our KSC. I also have some science. And I haven't yet done surface samples on all of these biomes yet. I was going to, but uh, I haven't yet done that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. While I do it, I'm going to go ahead and do that. But I wanted to show you the science buggy that, I've, that we've come up with or that I've been running with. This is the science buggy. So this is the, the new version of the science buggy. It's extremely stable, very easy to drive. Uh, but these wheels are not quite centered, and they keep kind of messing with me. They keep turning the, ve the vehicle and I don't want to turn. So I wanted to show you guys a cool little feature that I downloaded called, uh, you know, I don't actually know the name of the mod. I forget the name of the mod, but it is, it has to do with a grid. It overlays a grid system in uh, the, uh, the SPH as well as the vertical assembly building. So check it, check it out. Isn't that cool? So we have a grid now. We can see how things line up, make sure that they're perfectly aligned. And it's not just visuals either. It actually has some functionality to it. For example, if I was to say, take the rotate tool and click this part, it's gonna tell me, uh, let's make sure I'm in symmetry mode. It'll tell me whether or not I'm aligned properly or not. And if I'm not, I can press like the J and N key, I think. And see how it moves it a little bit? and realigns it to where the wheels are perfectly straight. Perfectly straight, see that? So let's try this one here, back here. Okay, a little bit off, just a little. All right, those ones actually looked like they were pretty much on. So now these wheels are perfectly forward, like they're perfectly straight and forward. And if I didn't have the grid, I would be like, why, like I'm gonna have to eyeball it. I don't wanna eyeball it, so there you go. Pretty, pretty cool. Okay, we're here at the KSC, and uh, I have 306 science. I just went ahead and did a whole bunch of surface samples at all the different biomes around the KSC, uh, as well as some more material study, mystery goo, and seismic um, tests, because you have to run those multiple times to get 100% of the value of them. So you can run them, you know, I ran them again and got some more science for them. Um, so let's go ahead and into the research and development really quick and unlock a couple of technologies. We got 306 science, you might as well use it. So we're in the research and development 306 science will buy us a couple of things. So I think what I'm gonna do here is try to prioritize sort of the future, near future instead of the far future. I do want to get to science tech because I get some pretty cool experiments here with scanning modules. We can start to see sort of where some you know, ore is, where we can start mining, etc. There's also a space telescope in here, which I'm not entirely sure the usefulness of this. I know there's really no science that you get from it, which is really odd, but I don't know. It's there. Zoology Bay, which we will have when we start getting our space stations up. Uh, we'll start to see how do animals act in space. <laughs> um, we have advanced exploration that's coming up as well, which is going to give us a whole bunch of stuff for space stations and uh, uh, some space station science, which is pretty good. But we're looking for the near future here, and I'm thinking that on our way to get to science tech, we're probably, we need to get space exploration, which unfortunately doesn't give us much. It does give us the rove mate. Uh, this is like a rover body, which comes built in as a probe. So you can actually control this remotely, which is kind of nice. Uh, and I might look at that, uh, but it comes with this experiment too. And I, that's what's drawing me to it is there's more science experiments there. So I might get this and command modules, um, which is gonna give us a ton of different command modules, including the Lithobrake 4K, which is from the Lithobrake um, uh, litho mod, basically. Type, type Lithobrake into CCAN and you'll get that mod. Which is great because it holds four Kerbals inside it. It's a very spacious command pod. But Advanced Electrics is also really good. It gives us retractable solar panels, which is great, and the Gorsat. The problem is it's 160 science and I can't buy this and this. If I could buy both this and this, then that'd be great. But I can't because I would need another 34 science to do that. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take space exploration, get the rover body and this new experiment. Then I'm gonna grab command modules. Okay, 56 science remaining. It doesn't have enough, I don't have enough to buy anything, I don't think. 
Uh, these are all 90, so no, no nothing, not enough to buy it. But we have good command modules now, which means we can start sending manned missions later, which is really great. Do we have any new contracts from unlocking those parts? Not really, just in space flight or in flight above certain. No, I'm not going to do that. Okay, let's talk about launching our satellites. Okay, we're just going to open up the uh, satellite that we launched before. So let's take Sphere of Influence 2, because I think I overrided. I think I did an override on this one, and I don't, I don't like that I did that. So let's just delete that one. And we'll go to Sat 2 instead. So load that up. So this is the satellite that basically mimics our second launch, which is pretty cool. And I don't think there's much we need to change. I think it's exactly the way we want it. The only thing I'm going to change, actually, is getting rid of this dish. We don't need this big dish anymore. Um, but I don't like having this Kerbal Engineer thing on the top. I hid it underneath it, which is kind of like... I, I like to keep this thing hidden. Um, I wonder if I can put it... You know what? We're just going to do this. I'm going to slap this right underneath here. This then put that there there nobody has to know it's there okay so I, I feel like this looks a little empty i feel like we need something on top something up here so let me look around just for a small bit never you know what actually i don't need to look around because we have this antenna this antenna is going on the top what is this antenna charlie this is that new experiment we just got from unlocking the space exploration uh Still getting torque. Oh, all right. Let's. Can I get you to line up like perfectly? Not gonna do it for me, are you? This doesn't. This isn't uh, built to be on the very top. I don't think. Okay, zero torque. Good. All right. So this is that new experiment we had. So let's pop this open. We'll deploy that. And that's what that will look like. Looks a little weird. But I'm, uh, I'm all right with it. Yep, totally all right with that. Uh, I'm going to put a, some other experiments on this satellite too because we're going to want to transmit them. And I want science as fast as possible. So we're going to do that. So let's take, we're going to add one of these barometers. I'm going to add a thermometer over here, let's say. Yeah, and let's put this down a little bit. Like that. Okay, and then on this side, Oh, let's see. How about... You know, I, I don't think I want to do anything that's non... I could put a boom, but that's just kind of awkward. We'll do that later. Okay, we'll just put a thermometer and a pressure barometer for now. Those two things. Yeah. Those two things. Okay, so this is our satellite. It's going to do its thing, and it's going to be great. So let's go ahead and put the fairing underneath. All right, save this. Oh, now we've saved, now I've overrided SAT2. Uh, well, whatever. We're gonna rename this to Kerbin SAT. This is gonna be SAT1. We're gonna rename it to be Moon. Moon as Sphere of Influence SAT1. I'm gonna actually call this Relay. So this is the Moon Relay SAT. And I'm gonna say also contains science experiments. And these are, it, it's containing reusable science experiments. So uh, we can use them in different biomes as the satellite moves around. So that's pretty good. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Um, the one thing I do need to te test though, before I go, is power consumption. And uh, you know, how this is going to ultimately affect like how, how the orbit of the moon is going to affect our power consumption because I don't want to get in a situation where I don't have power. So let's bust out Ampere. Go dark side calculations. For some reason the window appears over here. We're going to go the moon and I'm going to say that the orbit target is, let's just do like 450 kilometers. Yeah, let's just do 450 kilometers. So with 450 kilometers, the electric charge required is going to be 340 or 3422 because our dark period is longer so and we're rating this for 450 so I just need 
one more battery. There. That should take care of it. We have a surplus of 688. That should be fine. So as long as we get six, as long as we go 450 kilometers or less, we should be fine. Okay, we're on the launch pad. Uh, I've got Ferrum Aerospace Research up. We've got Kerbal Engineer. Let's do SAS on and punch it. Up we go. Our first probe, our first satellite uh, to the moon. Now you may be wondering um, why I'm going to the moon this time instead of Minmus, because in take one uh, of this playthrough, uh, if, if you will, uh, also watch episode 10 of the series if you haven't already. Uh, if you've been following the series and you aren't really sure what's going on, things are different, why do things look different, and why are things set up differently, it's because uh, all the details that are in episode 10, so watch that. Um, but you may be wondering why I'm going to the moon first instead of Minmus this time, because last time I went to Minmus first. And it's basically it's purely because of the contract. It's The contract says do this, and I say, okay, cool, I'd like money and science, please. So I'm doing it. I'm, I'm kind of a whore to, the, to money and science at the moment, uh, because you kind of have to be to, with career mode. Um, so that's how you get anything done in the early game. In the late game, too, it's, it really helps. And that's going to be kind of essential. There we go. Uh, sorry, I had to just focus on it really quick. Um, that's going to be kind of essential when we start to get... Uh, in the late game, we're starting to try to get bases up, and... Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be very difficult to get enough money to put bases on all these planets. So I'm really, really worried about the money. All right, let's float up a little bit. Our, our, pair, our apple abscess is way too high, so we're going to have to float up a little bit. Uh, we're going to disengage. We're going to get rid of this fairing pretty quick here. We're definitely not going the right angle. This is a terrible launch vector, but um, it's just the way this launch vehicle is designed. Thankfully, it's over-engineered with a ton of Delta V, so we don't have to worry about too much. But, yeah, right, let's get rid of, get rid of that, activate the Communitron here, and uh, punch out all these two, cool. Got tons of L2V, way more than we'll ever need for this satellite, so I'm not concerned about our terrible trajectory, if you will. While we're in, in space, though, we can also get this. We can log... Uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, let's log that. Six science for that. That's cool. Let's transmit that data. Awesome. This thing's weird. <laughs> I mean, I'm good with it, but it's just weird. Yeah, we'll leave it open. And we are in space. Okay. We are in space. I'm looking at this number up here, by the way, to know that. So whenever you whenever you see me in this view and you're like, how does he know when he's in orbit? I'm looking at these numbers up here from Kerbal Engineer. I'm seeing my periapsis height is 70 kilometers. As long as I see a 70 in front of this comma, um, I can stop and I'm in space. That's not exactly how orbits work uh, in in real life, uh, by the way, if you're if you're wondering about the realism of that, um, let's get rid of this display. Um, orbits don't really work that way in real life. All all orbits decay uh, over time, and actually, it's very fairly quick decay. The International Space Station, by the way, has to uh, make regular burns uh, on an almost daily basis just to keep its orbit where it is. So it's just little tiny burns, but it's it's still there and. Orbits will always decay. To where in Corval Space Program, they don't decay. So once you're in orbit, you keep that orbit forever. It's, you know, you, you got limitations. It's a video game. So um, I'm not sure if it's a limitation within like the actual code of the game or whatever, but uh, I think there is a mod which will add orbital decay. I think it's actually called Orbital Decay. Um, it will add it to the game. But it presents a level of micromanagement that I just don't want to deal with because. In real life, you have astronauts that are on the station managing and keeping track of that stuff to where in Kerbal Space Program, it's just me. And so while that's okay for one or two orbiting things, uh, we're going to have potentially hundreds of things 
going on at one time eventually uh, as the game progresses. So um, having to keep track of all of those orbits and making sure all of them don't decay, I pretty much spend all of my time just switching between vessels and making microburns. I don't want to do that, so that's probably why it's not in the game. <laughs> Although it would be nice if, if it was in the game, that crafts that had fuel on them would perform the burns necessary to keep its own orbit, to maintain its orbit. Just do that in the background. That would be cool. Um, then it presents a problem with having enough fuel. Um, and then I have to go up and refuel all my satellites all the time, which would be a bit of a pain in the ass. So maybe make it a very, very gradual, very, very small decay. I don't know. Okay, so we are orbiting Kerbin. We've got this apoapsis that's way over here. So let's hope that the moon, eh, the moon is over there, darn. Well, you know, you may think that's a good thing. We're already halfway there, <laughs> not, not really, but um, we're gonna meet up with the moon kind of over here. So the burn is gonna have to take place kind of over here, which means we sort of wasted some Delta V there, but like I said, we, we over-engineered this thing. So let's take and go like about here. And then, uh, let's get Flight Engineer out of the way. Uh, and then we're just going to go prograde and see if we meet up with the moon. We're not gonna meet up with it here. I'm gonna have to uh, move it, but all right, let's move this. Yeah, we're gonna have to move it, do it way out here. There we go. Okay, so let's move it back a little bit. And there we go. And, okay, so right here, our periapsis is really far out. So maybe we can burn a little faster. And let's just move ourselves over just a tad. Burn a little faster. Oop. I like that, but I didn't like where it was. Uh, let's switch to focusing our view here. So if you focus your view on the body that you're going to uh, approach, you can actually see your, your sort of trajectory, if you will, for your maneuver that's actually over here. You can see it right by the body itself, which is kind of cool. So if I burn faster, oh, now we're, now we're not gonna meet it at all. Let's go back to this. Uh, I want to get this in a place where I can burn fast and meet it fairly quickly. 930, you know what, 9, 395, if we can hit that, that's pretty good because that's right around where we wanna be anyway in terms of distance. So I think we're gonna try and hit that. Now how much Delta V is this maneuver? 663, wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's execute that. This build uh, works super well to get things to orbit. <laughs> it works too well, there's too much delta V. All right, let's kill the rotation here. We don't need flight computer anymore. Um, I really didn't need it there anyway, but I wanted to do it anyway. All right, so our, our periapsis actually turned out to be uh, 367. Very nice, very, very nice indeed. Let's zoom ahead just a little bit in time. Okay, just because I want to uh, get sort of this stuff sorted out. So there's only 107 delta V left, 107 meters per second. I don't need it. Um, I have plenty in the next stage, so we're just going to stage this right now. Get rid of that. We'll activate this engine. And, you know, I have just the right mind to just sort of let this thing drift and rotate and flow. But before we do, we're going to activate these these uh, antennas here because we want to have the range because we're gonna we're about to get kind of kind of far away from Kerbin and we want to make sure we have the range so we're gonna take this and we're gonna say Kerbin is its target that one will point to Kerbin all the time which is gonna keep us connected to the other satellites uh, we could probably activate some of these if we wanted to I guess we could activate this one and point it to Minmus. And we can just say like this one is pointed towards active vessel. That's fine. Cool. Uh, we can also do some more experiments if we want to, because we're in high over curb and now high space. So let's transmit that data. I also have other uh, science experiments here. So let's 
perform that. Uh, oh, okay, no atmosphere. Makes sense. Temperature scan, we've already done that high over Kerbin, so yeah, those experiments are already done. Okay, so that's that. Uh, this is going to drift for how long? Now, is, this is telling me now that, oh, because I decoupled, I actually threw my orbit off a little bit. Uh-huh. Okay, Newton's third law. I got it right this time. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and activate SAS. See what I have to do to get this corrected. So let's just maybe make a maneuver like up here. If I burn retrograde, does that solve it? I still get a moon encounter. I'm not sure what this is showing me. I'm still getting a moon encounter, right? Moon escape. In order to have an escape, I have to have an encounter. It's just not quite showing me what I want to see. Let's let's go ahead and let's make a node here. Uh, and then I want to focus my view on moon. So right here, it's not showing me that I'm entering. It just shows me that I'm ex that I'm escaping. So if I bring this back, or maybe forward. No, nope, definitely back. Okay, bringing that back is what I need. So I need to slow down a little bit. Ejecting that tank pushed me forward. So let's just bring ourselves in to be about 380 is good. I actually, I don't even need 380 because we're going to be a little over 400. So let's do 450. No, let's bring it in. Uh, 412. 392 is good for me. So we'll make that burn. Uh, and we'll get ourselves aligned up a little bit better with that orbit that we want. So let's limit the thrust on this so that the flight computer doesn't overshoot. Just do 10, I guess. And then we'll point to the node and tell it to execute that maneuver. Now we should never lose connection to this. We should have a connection continuously all the way to the moon. The only time we should lose a connection to this satellite is when we go behind the moon and the moon is blocking us from seeing Kerbin. That's the only time we should lose connection with this satellite right now. That's why we set up the satellite network so that we don't have to deal with losing connections anymore. And because we had a contract for it, it actually made us money instead of costing us money, which is pretty good. That's kind of why I'm you know, catering my workflow to contracts at the moment because, well, they pay you to do things you're probably gonna do anyway, like setting up satellite networks, which is great. We need that, we need the extra cash. We got outer planets to deal with, we got so many extra bases and stuff. All right, and perfect. The, the weaker engine, limiting the thrust on the engine uh, presented, uh, basically gave this flight computer more precision, which is great. But the next time we do a burn though, we're going to need full thrust. So we'll do that. Okay. This is on the dark side now, and it's definitely doesn't have enough power to withstand dark side this far. So it's probably going to run out of power. Well, it is moving away though. So maybe we'll get lucky. Yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, piece of cake. Got that extra battery. Okay, well, this satellite is on its way. Uh, we don't really need to watch it. It's going to be uh, five, it's gonna reach in five hours. Actually, it's not, a, it's not a day, it's actually pretty quick. Okay, let's just do it then. It's five hours, I don't mind that. So let's just warp to the sphere of influence change. Whoa, I love that, love that feature, it's so great. Okay. So we are currently on an encounter with the moon and we have multiple satellites connecting to us, which is really great. Okay. So I believe we're over the moon now, right? No, we're still high over, we're still high in high space Kerbin. So uh, we're going to switch influences pretty quick here. I would think or not. This is weird. Why am I not getting an encounter? 
I'm still getting the like, the escape, but I'm not getting the actual encounter. Nope, here it is. Moon periapsis. Yeah, and it's still. This thing is is confusing me right now. I don't know why it's not showing me accurate information. This basically says without doing anything, I'm going to have an encounter. But this is telling me I have a curb and periapsis, so what is the deal? Moon encounter, two hours. All right, I'm just gonna let this go because I, I set this up, I set that burn up. I should, I should be able to trust that, so. Time warp keeps slowing me down. Uh, is it Kerbal Alarm Clock that's doing this? Four seconds, okay, so get off. Kerbal Alarm Clock needs to shut down. There we go, now it's switching the orbits. Like trying to figure out why it still has me like relative to the planet's orbit going that way. All right, so how this works, this is what patched conics does. How that works is I'm not actually heading that direction now. I, I didn't all of a sudden just do a 90 degree turn and I start going that way. Um, this is all relativity. These connections and things is all relative. I'm still heading that direction, but based on my speed and how I'm heading, by the time the moon gets there, I will be like kind of doing this relative to the moon. So regarding the moon's sphere of influence, from the perspective of the moon, this is what my orbit looks like, if that makes sense. It's not, I'm not actually going that direction. I'm still going that way, but it's, this is all relative to the body that I'm orbiting around. Real orbital mechanics, uh, real space, you always have like every mass, every body in space is affecting you. Gravity is pulling you in all in all sorts of different directions. The game doesn't do that. So uh, what, you le what you're left with is one body at a time affecting your craft. And this is how patched conics can sort of bring sensibility to that sort of convention, if you will. Um, to that method of displaying gravity and, and and orbits is by having one sphere of influence at a time and by showing you relative to that body what your orbit looks like, if that makes sense. So that's what this is. Uh, I'm going to set up a burn at the periapsis and let's just move my maneuver over here. Um, periapsis, there we go. And I want to burn retrograde. So I'm going too fast right now. I'm gonna fly over here, I'm going too fast, the moon can't capture me, and my orbit gets adjusted, and it gets flung to the left a little bit. Now that doesn't actually happen. What I'm doing is I'm heading this direction right now, right? Remember, relative? I'm heading this direction, and when I end up exiting the moon's sphere of influence, because I'm going too fast, I end up on this path. So I end up getting turned. That's how that works. So this is turning me, right? So I need to slow down so that it doesn't turn me so much. So I'm just going to burn retrograde. That's, again, I'm pointing backwards from my orbits. And when I burn retrograde, I slow down. And if I slow down enough, the moon's gravity will keep me around a little while longer. So that's what I'm doing there. So I'm gonna burn retrograde until I get a periapsis and an apoapsis that's relatively the same, which is pretty much what I've got right there. Let's just burn a little bit back, 400 and 392, not bad, I'll take it. Okay, so let's just point towards the maneuver and execute the next maneuver. That's gonna be 206 delta V. I have 1800 on this satellite. So plenty to work with, way over-engineered, if you will. Now, I, t I ex kind of briefly explained how the orbits work and how patched conics and you're only under one sphere of influence at a time. This also works for science as well. Because we're now in a new body's sphere of influence, even though we're in the same space as we were five minutes ago and nothing really changed about space, because we're now in the moon's sphere of influence, all the science is now brand new. So we can get all new science now. There's this 12.0 here, so we'll just go ahead and get 12 science for that. We're also going to get uh, some pressure data, which is 24 science for atmospheric pressure above moon. Atmospheric pressure, the moon does not have an atmosphere, but we can get it anyway, so there it is. Um, log temperature data as well, there we go, and we'll send 16 science back to Kerbin. That's why we attach those little things. 
I think it's kind of worth it. All right, Kerbal Alarm Clock slowing down my warp again. I would shut it off because it's a little bit annoying that it does that so early and I have to speed it up again, but I really, really would hate to miss this maneuver because I accidentally hit time warp too much, like I've been known to do. Um, so I'm gonna leave it, even though it annoys me, I'm gonna leave it on and for like forever because I would much, much rather Kerbal Alarm Clock tell me to stop and force me to stop when I'm about to go too far. So that's how I'm gonna do it. Okay, so we are facing retrograde. That means we're facing backwards from our orbit. We're going that way, we're facing that way. That's gonna allow us to burn that way. And as a result of burning that way, we bring our orbit around into a nice circle. That's the idea. So there we go, we are now in orbit around the moon. Now I really would like to get my inclination to be zero. Um, I'd like my satellite network to do that. If it's not gonna do that, um, the better option, I guess, would be to go a little bit more inclined uh, and go um, and go 45 degrees, which is pretty close to what we are now. No, it's not. It's, we're like 16 degrees. Um, yeah, right there, 16 degrees. So I think I'm going to try and get our orbits to be along the equator. So to do that, I have to figure out where my orbit crosses the equator. This looks pretty close. Looks pretty close. If I did that, oops, and burn up. If I burn normal, my inclination will change to five. Okay, it's a little bit off now. Here we go. Inclination will change to there. Let's go up a little bit. So we got the sun in our eyes. Right about, whoop. A little bit too far, back it up. Let's move it this way a little bit. So I'm finding the point where my inclination goes to zero. That's where I'm looking right now. I want my inclination to be zero. All right, so it's, it's gonna stop right there. I may not be able to do this in one burn. I may need to do it in two. 0.14, oh, it won't go anymore. Okay, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with 0.14 for now. That's close enough. Okay, right there. So let's put that node and put that burn into the computer. So in 25 minutes, this satellite is going to make that burn. That's gonna more circularize our burn around the equator of the moon, which is more what I want. So there we go. It will also adjust our apoapsis and periapsis to be too far. And actually, that's not good. I don't want that. So let's. Also burn a little bit retrograde. Bring this apoapsis, which is now too far out. We're gonna bring it back in by burning slower. And we'll bring that in and get that to be a little bit better than what we want. So what about, right about 400 is good. 0.83, let's see if we can't fix that just a little bit better. Nope, it's going the wrong way now. We've crossed the threshold where we're gonna be, so that's okay. We'll leave it at 0.14 and 400 kilometers, perfect, that's what I want. So we achieve this, if you're wondering how do all these things work, we achieve this by burning at a certain angle that is not necessarily you know, strictly retrograde or strictly radial or whatever, uh, or in this case, normal. How we do this is we kind of do like an angled thing. So we are burning 12.92 um, uh, meters per second of delta V retrograde. This is the prograde rating, so we have a negative prograde, that's retrograde. So we're gonna spend 12.92 meters per second of delta V in the retrograde direction, and 91.63 meters per second of delta V in the normal direction. Normal being up, anti-normal being down. Um, and that's kind of how this burn is going to shape us. We're gonna burn slower while also tilting up. What you're left with is a vessel that's pointed up and slightly, ever so slightly, um, like, you know, burning us to be slowing down as well. So, let's get ourselves situated with our maneuver. We've got 20 minutes here. Uh, okay, we're on the dark side of the planet now. We're about to lose connection, I would think. Uh, well, Kerbin's over there, so we won't lose connection yet, but. 
This will also give us a preview of our, if our battery life is adequate. Okay, 16 seconds till maneuver. We're just burning normal, which is upwards. And we're gonna bring our orbit around. Get to where it's a little bit closer to an equator orbit here. Zero percent inclination. And there we go. Cool. So now that we've got that out of the way, uh, I'm just going to turn our vessel, turn our ship to face towards the sun a little bit. And actually, I need to go back this way just a tad. There we go. Let's speed up time a little bit. I want to get out of the dark side. Okay. I want to be able to see what we're doing. So, yeah, that, we lasted fairly, a good amount of time there in the dark side, but it, everything worked out. Um, so let's take a look. I, I, I think this is probably fine for now. I would like my inclination to be just a little bit uh, better but I'm not sure where I would have to burn at this point, right? We're getting higher as we go around. So if I want my circularization to be lower, I need to move this direction. Hit again, 401.8, 401.2, whoops, that's not what I want. 399.84, 400, pretty much right on. That's where I want to make the burn. Node, execute. Okay, so that's 38 minutes away. Piece of cake. We're not going to wait 38 minutes. I'm going to launch something else. So let's go back to the Space Center. I don't need these experiments on this either because we already ran those. Not going to be any benefit to having those on there anymore. I think this is probably good. We can just leave it like this. I'm not, I guess I'm not really, I don't really care about the, how blank it looks. Um, maybe I could do something else. Maybe I could do like a, put like a long range on here, you know, just in case some of the other long range satellites maybe can't see it. At least one can. I don't know. Let's try that. Uh, this has a range of 90 million meters. This has a range of 60 gigameters, which is pretty long, uh, pretty, pretty big radius there. How about we do this? We'll put this on the top. Yep. Now we're gonna to have to reevaluate our power consumption because of that too. So let's bring up Ampere. It's because I, I just like something. I like every satellite to have uh, a purpose, a main purpose, but then also something else it can do. That might be cool. Or, hmm, now here's an idea. I wonder if this is a good idea though. Uh, should I have a life support satellite? What I mean by that is like a satellite that has life support resources on it in the event that we are running low on supplies and can't get back or don't want to abort our mission, we could meet up with a satellite and pull the resources off of a satellite. That's an interesting idea. I kind of like this idea. Um, you know, I kind of like this idea. I mean, I don't know when I'm gonna need life support but it's possible I will. So how do we do that? How would we do that? Let's, let's move this. We can take this battery off. Um, unfortunately, it's not tuned to life support as a tab. I wish it was. Uh, in the future, it probably will be. This is the filter configurator. I think it's our filter configs or something mod. Makes a much more reasonable, a lot more options, but a lot more specific like I could do like just landing gear, for example, or just landing legs. Um, I'm thinking it's in miscellaneous. All the life support's in miscellaneous for now because it doesn't have a category. Let's do uh, an oxygen container, right? Oxygen's important. So let's grab oxygen. Uh, we'll grab um, a food container in case they're out of food and water container in case they're out of water. So this will be a satellite that has some life support resources on it 
in case they need it. Now, how do they extract those, right? How do they extract the life support? So I think to do that, oh, do I have the radial attachment thing? I'm also not sure that it would be searchable either. I'm not sure what it's called. Let's see if we, we, we got some science, right? So let's try this. We're gonna rename this moon LS sat two. LS will stand for life support, okay? Contains life support supplies. Okay, we'll save that. Let's go back to research and development and see if we have enough science to do anything. There it is, right there. It is the CCR2 connector port. This is the one I'm looking at. It's a multi-purpose port. It can be used to plug uh, a winch into it and we can use uh, we can use this to transfer resources between vehicles. That so basically we don't need a docking port because the docking port's a little big. But this is really small, and we can use it with uh, with like an EVA. So I need this. It's 160 science to pull this off. I'm going to need 160 science. So uh, I don't not that far away. Uh, so yeah, I think this is a good idea. Life support on a satellite. They don't deteriorate. I mean, you'd think the food resources and water and stuff would deteriorate, but it doesn't, so we're going to use that to our advantage, maybe. If we ever run out of life support materials, um, you know, we can either bring our Kerbals up to the satellite in, in rendezvous, or I can maneuver the satellite to essentially uh, kind of just drop right down on, in their laps. You know, maybe it's a crash, but the life support stuff should be saved, or maybe we'll crash in such a way where only the engine gets blown up. I don't know. Either way, uh, we need to be able to get the life support stuff to the Kerbals if they need it so I don't lose them. And I think having one, at least one life support satellite around other other masses, other bodies that are not Kerbin, because um, if it's around Kerbin, then, I mean, they just go back into the planet. So that's what we're going to try to do, okay? Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye.